Hypervigilance keeps you alive. I always kept my head moving. Um, just hearing little things, like even when we did gunfire for dog training, it just like, you know, I, I, I reacted to it. When I found myself in a situation um, where adrenaline is flowing, where you, you are in danger, um, I didn't think about it at the time. I, you do what you do, you're focused on your mission, and you complete it. It's when I return that I think, wow, what if? Um, or that could have been me. Stress kept you aware of what was going on. Crowds did make me a little bit nervous just because I wasn't used to being around, you know, a large group of people. Boom, my anxiety would shoot through the roof, my stress levels would hit max, and I would be immediately hypervigilant. And then I would talk myself down in my head and say, it's all right, you know, there's nothing going on here, it's cool. And I would just, it would slowly relax, and then that would go away. It wasn't an all the time thing, it was, it was very situational. Things you would see. Um, when we were like searching vehicles and stuff, like now I'm always just like weary of like different vehicles and because we like would find stuff in the vehicles that were, that would like trigger off stuff that we'd have to take care of that made you like leery. There were times where I'd wake up and I'd freak out because I didn't have my weapon. There were certain sounds that when I heard them made me think of a lot. So we were walking by the Indiana Jones um, display and they had a big explosion. Well, I go for cover, and I look, and it's in slow motion, and what else is moving? I didn't understand it. I was like, oh, everything's okay. Fireworks started because it was the 4th of July. I did find myself a little trigger um, to where I responded quickly, turning, um, but that came with time. That After each deployment, it doesn't happen as much. It's just I'm able to, my body's able to say, nope, you're home, you're fine, nothing to worry, so. Somebody dropped a bag or something or something heavy, they dropped it, it made a lot of noise, and there was a big crowd of people, it was my second day home, and that kind of freaks out a little bit. Being in my house, I was more alert. I, you know, when I didn't sleep, I was just, you know, any little thing that I heard, you know, I was always up or checking my doors to make sure, you know, everything was okay. I was, I was really worried about security at that time when I came back, because that's all, you know, you had to do while you were over there, is worry about protecting yourself. So, coming back, I was more, like really worry about protecting my family a lot more. I've never found myself in the middle of a mission thinking, oh my gosh, I'm scared to death. Did I think about it afterwards? I thought about it afterwards saying, I should have been scared to death. When my daughter would pull on my shirt, because over there they pull on your shirt all the time, mister, mister, give me candy, give me this, give me water, and they pull on you all the time. And that got to where it gets to a point where it bothers you. And when my daughter came up and pulled me, I was like, oh, I mean, it's because it just is, I don't know if it's a flash, kind of a flashback of what you were, where you're at, but it's that you become so used to that happening, it bothered you so much that, um, but I, um, but I explained to her, I was like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to snap at you, but you know, I'm like, stop pulling on my shirt. And she gave me this weird look, like, you've never done that before. And then I have to stop and think, oh, I forgot where I'm at. We went out to a carnival and I was there for about a half hour and I just, my son was having fun on the rides and I just looked at my wife and said, we gotta go. You know, sometimes when we go to the store during the crowded times, I, just, I can't walk in. I would rather go at nighttime when it's more empty. Experience these situations that are normal and recognizing that they're normal over and over again uh, and realizing that that's sort of making it easier to deal with. And I joke and I laugh with other guys that go through the same thing that were on my deployment every now and then and we'll talk about you know, well, I did this, or I did this, and it makes it easier after a while to realize that this is normal, these situations are normal. Why is going to the mall wear you out? I tried to explain to her, because it's everything that we teach others not to do. Stay away from big crowds. Stay away from big targets. You know, know your environment. Where's your exit rows? You know, everything we've been teaching people and everything that we have trying to make sure soldiers return home, the mall goes against. Um, so it's hard to communicate that. And, and until you, until you, until I think you see a blast and you go look at a real blast site and you understand the damage that a car can do to a building and the lives, the innocent lives that are lost, it's very, I think it's very hard to process. I would say the best way to come down from being too alert would be to go out more often. Don't be a recluse and isolate yourself from people. I personally don't like 
large crowds. Because to me, large crowds, you can always be a victim. Because if I was a terrorist, I would definitely target a larger crowd. But the easiest way to overcome the high alert state, go out and just re-acclimate yourself to being in large groups and around people. Instead of staying home, watching TV, and just being a loner.